Hey guys, welcome to part seven, episode seven of a playlist of a build of a, let's grab this, Guitar Kit World ES-175 style kit. Now, I have, starting with opening the box in episode one and kind of going through some things and then prepping the guitar for finishing and and then um, gluing on the neck and, and theming it and installing the hardware and stuff. I've put all those episodes into a playlist that's going to pop up right there, right about now. If you have not seen those and you're catching this is the first episode, you want to stop, click on that link, and you're fixing to go down a rabbit hole because I'm going to go on for hours. But we are going to take a look through that playlist of this kit and the good, the bad, and the ugly all the way through. So the, the idea here is the playlist will give you the means to open the box and get through what it's going to take to build this guitar, uh, make it your own, personalize it, whatever you want to do. Now, we ended the last episode by installing the hardware on this. And you know from watching all the episodes that when I got this kit, I think the manufacturer was doing me a favor by sending me the gold kit. And um, um, I have never really liked gold trim. Some people love it. If you do, that's good for you. Um, but I went ahead and built it out just like I got it because what I wanted you to see out of this series is when you buy a kit from a manufacturer, this is the only manufacturer I have used a guitar kit world and um, so I don't know what the other ones are like but by building this guitar to this point and um, using what was there I'm able to give you an honest overview and step-by-step -step on what to do here but as I said in that very first episode gold is not my favorite um, there are some other things that pop up in these guitars where you're saying, ah, I really would like a, a better quality tuner or I would like a different kind of pickup or, or something else. So the good news for you is that there are options when you buy um, the kit. The takeaway thus far from me is I would pay the price of the kit just for the neck and the body. The rest of it was a bonus for me because you know that I float the market looking for Florentine cutaways, single cutaways, K1 uh, type stuff, big bodied arch tops that are beat up. And if I have to wait for those to come to me, sometimes I wait forever. And then there's a lot, a lot of work to do on most of them uh, that are being turned loose because they're cracked. They have tone bars that are broke loose. The bracing is broke loose. The neck is broke loose or it's, tilting the, the, the action is at two inches above the fingerboard. So, one more time, the takeaway to this point on this guitar is I would pay the price of the guitar just to get the neck and the body because I can do whatever I want from there. Um, but to be really honest with you, I've only found a couple things on here that I would change out thus far. Um, but what this episode is about, finally getting to the point here is this kit comes in a couple different options, uh, meaning the color of the trim. And I am actually going to pull all the trim off of this guitar, and we're going to replace it with another type of trim. And you're going to get a couple different looks at what this guitar looks like with the gold and the other set of trim I have. Remember, the takeaway on this is when you order one of these, you go down and look at the options. You could put different pickups on here. You could put different tuners. There's a lot of different things that will affect the price. But it, it gives the builder of these kits an opportunity to say, hey, you know what, I'm going to get, go get some Gibson 57, some high dollar pickups, and put those in if I choose to. I can go with these. You're going to find out at the end that these sound great, but um, you could upgrade these through the company. There's a lot of options. This episode is about options. Now, you're going to see me tear this apart. I'm not going to go through step by step with, with a lot of narrative, but what I am going to do is show you the steps. And I think when you see how I do this, the little glimpses of this 
process are going to give you some hints if you haven't seen the other episodes and kind of trig your mind about, you know what, working on arch tops, especially ones that don't have holes for pickups and stuff, you've got to plan things ahead and you're going to see me pull parts out, use dental floss and stuff to pull the other stuff back in. I'm anticipating, even though I've got to do some soldering, this is going to take me about an hour and I'll completely change out everything. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go to the bench. I'm going to give you a scan of this up and down and show you what it looked like before. That's before. You know, before. And then once I get the new kit parts on, then we'll take a look at the after. So let's get to the bench. All right, let's start with setting up the work area. You know, I wish I had one of those workstations where everything's on a stand and it rotates and everything, hint, hint, just before Christmas. Anyway, we'll make this do. We've got a um, neck stand here that we can just put on. If I can get this double-sided tape off of it, I don't like that. It's going to distract you from the wonder that is me working on junk guitars. Anyway... As always, have your bean bags. Have a couple of those, um, big one and a small one. You want a bunch of rags where you can protect everything. You want to do your gratuitous advertising for whoever built the kit. Um, but again, what we've got here is we've got the whole kit to change from gold to chrome and black. So. Let me get the guitar up here, and we'll go to town. I got everything, uh, soldering irons, um, stuff to measure, stuff to line things up with, um, screwdrivers. Uh, the main thing here is there's a lesson in this, and that is that this is kind of the monotony of having a guitar shop. Not everything is turning um, a cigar box or a coffee can or some other scrap apparatus into this wonderful new guitar that no one has ever seen. In fact, a lot of the end of those kinds of builds is eaten up with monotony like this. So um, let's get it up here and we'll start with removing the tuners and strings and all that. Okay, let's start here. If you don't have one of these, you might want to because it makes this job really quick. Okay, let me scoot this out of the way and show you a little trick here. Got the double mint gum. Christmas tin or whatever it is got a piece of cloth got this killer magnet here I put that there and I put one on top and one on the bottom and that way every time I pull a part off of here I can put it on here and it will stick to the magnet and not scuff up the part isn't that cool I think you get it after three right Okay, we're going to flip this over and take the tuners off. A couple things I want to point out to you. This is, it can get really monotonous. It, it can seem boring, get sloppy, but a couple things. Have the right bit, okay? One that's extended, has a Phillips, a small Phillips hat is good. When you're setting the clutch on your drill, set it low. Set it high, make you cry. Because if you start going the wrong way and you've got this set up to 10 or 20 and you strip one of these out, you're going to hate life. This is a time when you get in trouble making repairs on people's guitars, getting sloppy. So have that set right. Now, another thing I want to show you is when we flip this over, this guitar has been put together. I want to show you a couple things you might not 
think about until you learn them the hard way. What do you think on this entire guitar is sticking up the highest? Well, it's this three-way switch. So if I put this guitar upside down, um, it's going to be balancing on this. That's not good. Also, remember, your tailpiece is loose, and that's a reason why you want to have some rags and a little bit of low tack tape. Anyway, think about that when you're flipping this over. So let's get it flipped over and get these tuners changed out. Now you want to remember that while you have all this off, we used Mississippi clay and Mississippi river water to get this color on here. This is going to be a, an opportunity that I have to put some boiled linseed oil on here and get a coat of this and then put the new tuners on. So I'm going to want to do that. Anytime you can touch up the finish and do whatever you got to do, do it. And then these will go on and this will be protected. Once the tuners are on, you're kind of messing around and trying to get between them. There's no better time than to do this. Also, if you think that your holes that you drilled are bagged out or something like that, it's time to look at that. A toothpick and a little glue is an opportune time while you have this off. Okay, you want to remember in one of the episodes I told you about these paper towels that are dustless and lintless. They're made by Wipeall, W-Y-P all. Um, and I'm getting a little linseed oil on it like that. See that? And touching up underneath where the tuners are going to be. Again, one of the safety lessons I gave you in using boiled linseed oil is if you have rags that are saturated with this stuff and you wad them up and leave them in your shed, they're going to combust and catch on fire. So, there we go. A little bit of that will do. And we have just snuck on another coat that wouldn't have been there had we let this guitar go out without changing the tuners. So here's the chrome tuners. Here are the chrome tuners. I'm going to pull this out of the bag and then I'm going to use this opportunity to put the gold tuners back together. Here you see them put them all together, assemble them, and put them in this bag. That way I don't have them bouncing around two years from now looking for one that I can't find. All right, there we go. You want to remember, if you've got gold screws that goes, go with these, you're going to want those in there too. Me, I use Chick Flick Teal screws that I color. That way you can tell what I've messed up and what somebody else has. So we'll put those aside and know what's in our inventory always. Okay guys, old tuners off, or they're not really old, they were just put on a little bit ago. But I got something cool and I got something not cool. What's cool is these tuners say Grover on them. Um, you know what that means, these are good tuners. Um, but when I put them on, the mounting holes are in a different place which leaves the ones that I put on already exposed. So, um, not a big problem. I can take a piece of paper towel and take six toothpicks. Oh, I wasn't prepared, but you really got to know this. The biggest difference in guitar building is if these toothpicks are bacon flavored toothpicks and I just wasted one. Um, you might ask yourself how do you know that these are bacon flavored toothpicks? Well I tasted them I put them back in here and if you care to do that we can we can make arrangements for you to do that when you visit my shop. Like that will ever happen right? Okay so I don't want to do this but what I will do is I will Squeeze out a little bit there, and I will put these in these holes like so, and then just snap it off. See that? Like so. It will set quickly. 
and we'll fill these holes up. Now, I can take a furniture marker that matches this, or I can use Chick Flick Teal Rod again because that is what I do. And we just go along like this. And we will sand those a little bit and color them later when everything has set up. Now me, I don't care if people know that I have reworked something and that is the telltale sign if there's been a crack or something that I fixed, but it's a matter of preference. So there we go, and I'll color those in later, but now we can put our Grover tuners on. I'm happy about that. Thanks, Guitar Kit World. That's an example of an upgrade. Oh, last thing, this is kind of like putting fret markers in on the side of the fretboard and clipping them off and sand them down. You want to put a little piece of something to protect your work there so you don't scuff all this up. Little trick there. A couple more tricks I want to show you. One of them is how to have the Super Bowl of motocross going in the back ground while you're trying to film, but that's part about living in non-stop action, act and cultural capital world. So where we're at right now is the other tuners had an offset where the mounting hole was here. These are straight down. So I am not going to put these in and try to drill uh, like so and mar this up or whatever. So I'm going to place each one, get it straight, and then I'm going to take an awl and I'm going to use the tip of that awl to make myself a little indentation where I can see the drill. The next thing, you don't want to drill all the way through so you know how long your um, screws are. We're going to go back to the Chick Flick Teal screws. Do you see that? What a nice accent that is. Anyway, I am knowing that this is only so thick, so I put a piece of flapper tape and I go along to each hole. And once that flapper tape knocks down the sawdust from the hole, I know that I'm in the right spot. So I'm going to do that with all of them and screw the back side of the tuners in. All right, guys, another little trick I want to show you. When I'm putting the screws in the tuners, I am not going to tighten them all the way down. I'm going to get them close because, first off, I don't want to twist those off. Um, but secondly, I've got to put these retainers in on the other side. And if these are on tight and everything doesn't line up, then you've got no room to wiggle these around and get them to work. Now, I don't want to forget that there are washers. There's a flat side to the washer and a rounded off side. I don't know if you ever notice that or not but these are still loose enough for me to put these on like so and then I always have a nut driver for this make sure everything is okay tighten those up and then I'm going to flip this back over I'm going to tighten up the screw by hand I'm not going to use a nut driver I'm going to use this and then I'll come back around and finally um, tighten these up for the last time. I am so freaked out about this. The corner of the knot has to be pointed up or I just can't live. Right, there we go. Let's flip it over now. Again, watch that tail piece because it's back there wanting to jump out at us and scratch things up. And the last thing I want to do here is make sure that everything is even with the world. There we go. There we go. And then I take a nut driver and tighten these up by hand. I do not want to twist these off. So if you've ever tried to get one of these out after it twists off and you're thinking about how much time you'll save by not having to flip the guitar over 
an extra time or two. That is a difficult lesson to learn. So one more time, those are on. Flip those there. And again, those have to be pointed up or I cannot sleep. Bingo. Perfect. Off to the next step. All right. While we're coming down the neck, the next thing we're going to talk about is the strap button here. Um, you remember in the video when we put the hardware on, we talked about putting the strap button right there. And that when you do that, the strap comes on, it loads sideways here and there, and none of this weight of the strap or the tension on the strap is taken up anywhere but on the screw and after a while it wallers out. So if you put the strap button on the opposite side of where it's coming into and across the neck here, in other words on the Florentine cutout side, you will be in much better shape. Now something to think about is, have you ever seen anyone play in a club that's just well lit? No, they're always looking for um, uh, the light and stuff that I, I would like to put a black uh, strap button on here like this one. It goes along with the binding really well, but you don't see this well in a club. And I have run across more musicians that have to use the same one. I know one that uses belts and has used the same belt. There's only one belt that's never that's ever been made. So I'm going to go ahead and put the chrome one on that came with the chrome can't imagine that. So again, we're going to set the clutch down and we're going to back this one out. I didn't put this one on tight. It leaves it with a little room to rotate when the strap is on so you don't ruin your finish. But there we go. We pull that out. Notice that there's a little felt underneath there. And so we're going to use the same chick flick teal screw to put on our chrome strap button. And of course there's one on the tail piece that we're going to have to do too. Notice I'm going slow. Yeah, it moves just a little bit. Perfect. All right, we are going to pull the pickups off now and that starts with the three-way switch. Um, this is even with uh, holes here for the pickups this is kind of a nightmare. So I'm going to show you a trick we saw in uh, another episode. And that is, first off, they have these spanner wrenches. You see this? It is smooth on one side, has teeth on the other. Um, you can switch it around in case you want to put something on or off. But the bottom line is we need to bite this this way and look it takes that nut off real simple. Now, we are going to have to pull this out and pull a new one in. Now, that can be a nightmare. Last time we used uh, a hanger, a wire hanger, uh, but this time it's going to be really simple. We are going to take and make a noose right here, a choker like this, and pull it down and make a, a knot like that. Then we're going to loop it back over itself like that, and we're going to put it on underneath the knob. We don't want to take the knob off just yet. Now we're going to pull the knot off here and the washer and with this piece of dental floss we can push this through and once we get this pulled out we'll cut the dental floss off and put it on the new switch and then pull it in. Okay now it's just a matter of pulling out 
the screws that hold the surrounds around. The nice thing about this kit is that everything is compressed and the surrounds are attached to the pickups because compressing these springs and stuff is a nightmare. They end up shooting across the room and and then you've got a problem. So these, remember we put the surround here that has the scrap metal that we use. I think everything is going to look good this way. And we just make sure we know where our metal I mean our magnets are there like so and then these just pop right out now you'll see that all the wiring for the three-way switch is here and we just pull this up and there we go again when we put the new switch in we will just tie it off and then pull this. Can you see here? Let me move the camera a little bit. Yeah, we'll just pull it through like that. So let's get these pickups off and start thinking about soldering up the new one. All right. We've got our rags here for stuff like this. So we'll just put the pickup here. And now this one is loose. And we'll put it here. I want you to notice that we wound up all of our wiring and everything where we can get to it pretty easily. We're gonna have to unwind some of this harness here. But basically we're gonna trace back the wires, um, solder up everything that goes to the three-way switch the way it's supposed to be, ground um, one pickup, the other pickup, and then that center wire is the one that goes back to the jack, the input jack. So. Uh, this is basically making a few cuts and wires and then dropping these in uh, where these were. And you want to remember that the pickups are labeled neck and bridge for you already. So I'm going to do some soldering and cutting here and catch up with you in a few. So a couple of things here. Let me point something out here. Um, I have started to pull wires off the three-way switch here and one of them went to the bridge and one of them went to the neck pickup so I took wire or tape and marked a bridge and one neck now something else you'll notice is as these wires get fed through the guitar body this one comes from the back um, where the bridge is and comes up and through here so I'm going to take these and make sure I do the same thing. It's kind of like a puzzle. So we're going to feed this one through the body and we're going to do these one at a time. So um, if you have a piece of coat hanger with a hook in it, that's good. But we need to make sure that we get these right. Like so. So we'll tie that off and we'll hook up the bridge pickup first, which is basically strip the wires, go back into the three-way switch. I've got a ground wired up here off the ground post, and then the rest of these, I'll just cut these uh, off, and we'll use the, the new switch that's got the right chrome package color. There we go. Okay, real quick here, I don't want to relive life, but I have shrink wrap. I'm going to cut a piece of it like so, black shrink wrap. And then I've got a piece of this pushback wire, like so. I am going to cut a piece of it and make my connection to the ground on my three-way switch uh, before I start to do anything. So we push this back a little bit. If that's hard to do because it's cold in your shop, like right now, I just grab it like that, okay? Now what I want to do is I want to put a kink in the wire like this and I'm going to slide this piece of shrink wrap down a ways to get it away from the connection like so. Now this switch, the ground post, 
is on this side by itself. On this side, you have the connection for one pickup, the other pickup, and in the center comes in the hot wire from the jack. So I'm going to go to this side like this. I've already tinned this, meaning I've put a little bit of solder on it, like so. And then I'm going to bend this over. And then once it's in there, I'm going to squeeze it down, make it tight, just like that. And then I'm going to get my soldering iron and the handy gadget that holds everything and solder that up. Once that's soldered up, then and cooled, I'm going to bring this down and cover that up so it won't touch anything. Then all my grounds from my pickups and from my input jack are going to tie into this and this will be out of the way and then we'll make our connections over here. Okay, notice everything is shiny on that, that soldering connection because if it's not, that means it's turned cold and you won't have a good connection. So now we just take the shrink wrap and we slide it all the way up over that, that connector. See, you got to have the right size shrink wrap, but you just slide that up there and then we take our heat source like so and once that's done this will never come undone you don't have to worry about anything touching each other and grounding it out and then we're going to do the same kind of thing over here we're going to take a lot of care and soldering the hot wires again one on each side for the pickups and then the center one is the hot wire from the input jack we're going to do shrink wrap and everything and then down in here we'll bend pull back everything and make all of our ground connections to each one of these three wires back down in here and keep everything clean away from each other a three-way switch is something you really want to pay attention to because if you have to take one out, it's a hassle. So spend the time to do this now instead of later. Okay, I don't want to be redundant here, but I, I do need to show you this. So I've got the bridge pickup uh, on this lug over here. I've got a piece of shrink wrap that I pulled that is blue. Um, and this will cover up the connection here where it doesn't get too the ground wire and then see that slips right over here i've looked ahead knowing that i'm going to pull the other wire uh, for the other pickup up through this green piece of shrink wrap and then once all those ground wires come together here then i will slide this over them and cover up everything so nothing uh, will get messed up but the first one here we've got the blue on the outside lug and a little bit of shrink wrap will protect that forever. Now we're going to put the working uh, this way so we don't get ourselves in a bind. We're going to put the wire coming from the pickup, the input jack, I mean, to the center one. And then again, the other pickup or the neck pickup comes to this lug. We'll make all the ground attachments right down here and everything will be wonderful. Okay, now we take the dental floss off of the old switch. Sometimes this is trickier than it looks. Get that out of the way. Open that up a little bit using the same noose. I got lucky this time. And then we're going to kind of make sure everything is wound right. And we're going to slip that over almost forgot something I have to take off the washer and the nut that's for sure we'll put those over there and then we'll slip this noose on we want to make sure the knob is on there because if it's on there it makes it a lot easier it makes it a lot easier and then let's pull this out of the way and see how we do pop this in here like this remember I have this tied off to the there we go now I just got to cut this off screw that on and use my spanner 
tighten everything up, we're good to go. All right, a little tricky to get your hands underneath there. Let me see here. We'll, again, this spanner has teeth on one side, none on the other. Now what I'm going to do is I don't want this to come off, so I'm going to take a piece of paper towel and put a little bit of Loctite on here. Here's a little trick. You don't want to just take the Loctite and dump it in there. You want to just put a piece of paper towel and squeeze it on the paper towel. And then what will happen is the capillary action off the paper towel will drop the Loctite on the threads and not down in the middle of your switch. You don't want that. All right, now it's just a matter of fishing the dental floss out of there. You don't want to cut it off and get it hung up, but there we go. Now, last thing, if you want your switch to flip up and down one way or the other, now that you've got it on there, you can just take this and turn it this way and let it spin and it'll be good. If you want to do it the other way, you just kick it back this way and turn it like so and then tighten it back up. And you're good. All right, guys, we've come a long way in the last few minutes. Um, our switch is up in here. It's tight. It's wired. The pickups have been changed out. They drop down in here. Little tiny bit of a trimming to do on the cut out. Um, everything wasn't exactly the same size, but good. So those are in. Look at all this dental floss. This dental floss is how you pull potentiometers up through and all this kind of stuff. Remember, as we took these out, we tied off dental floss, a lot of wiring to label and all that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, we're at a point now where we are going to pull out uh, the bridge and the tailpiece and put in a jack, the uh, input jack, change that out because that's a color um, chrome that, there was a gold one there, we need a chrome one, it's getting late now, so. Okay, these studs that the bridge mounts on, it's got a tunematic bridge kind of. A quick way to pull these off is don't forget your rag and you can take your spanner wrench with that opening and you can just make sure your cloth is in the right place. We put that fancy finish on here. But we can just pry those up just like that. They pop right out. You remember we put those in with um, a reamer? So that um, let us fit them in just right. And then we just come over here like this and put a little pry on and pop those out. Gold ones, goodbye now. I want to show you in here, if you look down, let's make sure we can see here, there's a hole right there and that wire that is going down and grounding things, I can see it sticking through. I, I don't know if you can see it there. Where are we? Right there. Um, trust me, I can see it still in there. I'm glad it's still in there because we don't have to mess around and try to run a new one. Um, but we're just going to push in the new studs there. We're going to change out the tailpiece. You don't need to watch me do that. Oh, and all this dental floss. Sometimes it's when you put a choker wrap on this dental floss. Sometimes the easiest way to get this stuff off is with this little razor knife. Anyway, let me get these parts on here and we'll put the knobs on and we'll have a last look. Oh, I almost forgot. Well, we're taking off the tail piece here. Um, they're the same ones, just chrome ones, gold. We want to remember that we put the grounding wire coming through one of these holes here. And you can see it right there. You see it? I want to make sure that that stays in place. The wire comes through that hole right there, drops down, and then wraps around the screw. So when we put our new tailpiece on here. Just keep a rag there until we get everything mounted. We want to make sure that that stays right there.
Okay, notice I have this padded and it's time to put the studs in. When we had the gold package on, I'd run them up just a little bit. Um, I'd already flayed it or had somebody flay it, so the intonation was right with these run up just a little bit. So I did that. It's going to save my, me a little time. Um, these drop right in here. Remember, this one's got the wire in it, so we'll drop that in there. They're a little bit snug down at the end. And then, as always, remember I told you in the one episode, um, three of these slant away, three slant towards the big strings, the heavy strings, the bass side. Um, they slant away back to the tailpiece. Uh, on the treble side strings, those three, they slant forward. So we'll just... There we go. And then the last thing, let me reach around here. We've got to put our knobs on. All right, easy money. Now all we got to do is string this thing back up, do a little adjustment here and there on this bridge, and we'll run through it. Hey guys, we're done. You know what? Before I close this episode out, let's put this on the bench and I'll flip back and get the before with the gold package and now with the chrome package. Okay, guys, what do you think? You like the gold better, or did you like the chrome? I really think black would be best, but I'm not going to put you through this again. I like the way this worked out. The most important part here is I ended up with a good guitar out of a kit, and you've watched it go from coming out of the box uh, to everything we could do, um, pull, pulling the hardware in and out a couple of times and that kind of stuff. It all worked. Um, there was never a problem with uh, the parts and how they went and things like that. And you know the finish was uh, pretty easy to do. Um, I've, t I've said it numerous times in this episode. I didn't say this. It's cold in the shed. So I'm starting to, my teeth are starting to chatter. But at the end of the day, for what I paid for this uh, kit and for what I have to go through to find bodies that look like this stripped down, um, I couldn't beat the price just if I would have just got the neck and the body and no parts. I would have been happy uh, to pay that. Anyway, so what do you think? Takeaway is there's a lot of different options. You can upgrade the pickups. You can upgrade uh, just about anything on the guitar. But hey, good looking guitar. Now, we're going to get out to Ventura. I told you that we were going to go to Ventura in episode six. Uh, but I had to give you this episode because I think it's important. That playlist up there on top, um, start to finish, opening the box to this, and and now we're going to hear it. The most important part is what this thing is going to sound like. So, hey, thanks for hanging in there with me. Uh, give me a like and subscribe if you haven't, and I hope this playlist uh, works out good for you. I will see you in Ventura. Let's go. Well, you just wait. I'll drive over there and you can watch it on television. Perfect.